This is Andrew Silch with his second performance on the Squirrels Nuts video channel on YouTube. Um, this time I'm going to try and talk a bit about things that probably you heard before. Uh, the Squirrels Nuts have basically talked about it as well. But I thought I could uh, get a good solid repetition of some main features to become better Battlefield 3 players. First thing to think about is that when you're joining for instance our server or any server and hopefully you have some friends on as well is to make a solid squad instead of mixing it up make a new squad after the patch it's easy to create a new squad Join in or invite in your friends or your fellow squirrels in this measurement. And sort out your squad perks. Um, if you have unlocked them, it's a very good thing to have. And try and also mix it up a bit. And uh, talk among each other in which way you're going to play. For instance, if you're aiming to uh, try and drive tanks on a big map as Caspian Border, you should go a mix of support, engineer and assault. And why this combination, you may ask? Well, the assaulter can revive an engineer that's repairing a tank outside the supporter can give ammunition to the engineer who can jump out of the tank and help the tank gunner with the main thing, shooting at the enemy tank that we are engaging. For instance, if we have a squad of say four players, we have one support guy, two engineers and assault guy. The assault guy can either drive the tank or in some ways be the third C, the CITV position. And then we can have engineers for driving or main gunning or CITV position and a support guy tagging along. If the support guy has C4 and the engineers have RPGs and repairing tools and you have the assaulter trying to lay back so he always can revive you have a very very strong tank assault team especially if you grab two tanks which means that you have an engineer and a supporter in one tank an assaulter and a, an engineer in the other tank that way when you're engaging a, a enemy tank for instance you can have one player in the main seat of the tank shooting at the enemy tank and if the engineer is the second player in the tank or the third he can jump out send an RPG against the enemy tank or SMUV and he can also go behind the tank and repair it which means that you can get a lot of damage against the enemy vehicle in a very short burst a very very good and effective method of attacking a tank. Same thing goes with if you're for instance having a chopper. If you're four guys and you have a transport chopper you can have one pilot, two gunners and one guy repairing. Which makes the, the whole process very good as well. Uh, in that case you can also select to be mostly engineers and you can then do things like repairing and gunning jumping back and forth in the seats of the chopper. Another fun fact that we actually discovered a while back is that you can drop C4 from a chopper on top of tanks and blowing them up or jeeps for that matter. A very good measurement to keep down the enemy vehicles and a bit surprising for many of them. That was a bit about general uh, fighting procedures. Uh, there is tons of different methods you can go about things. But generally when you squad up and you team up and you use team VoIP and you try and communicate not only within your four man squad but in the team it, and it's full. 
you can become very very effective. Communication is a key to success in 9 out of 10 fights. Obviously, if you play a lot of games with the same players, the communication gets less and less needed because all the different people need, uh, uh, needed are already uh, in the gaming mode and know what to do. Uh, I have been in instance where I for instance haven't said that much but still been in a squad and a team that have been very effective because I have selected a position, I selected a squad perk and I tagged along with my squad and I basically for instance being a soldier when I seen that we have already have a lot of support in the team and trying to revive people and keeping people alive which means uh, a better end result. Uh, one thing that I've seen in common is that med packs and ammo packs are not often dropped if you're not in a squad or team for instance like squirrels where you play as a whole team if you jump into random server many times you don't see any ammo boxes or med kits drop down and you're certainly not gonna get revived too many times either so try when you're a support and when you're a medic, drop a, a medic or support pack where you see it can be needed. In the center of the fight or a bit back around the corner, somewhere where you feel it will do good. Uh, on conquest, uh, in conquest mode on Operation Metro, around B flag and the stairs, very good places to have med packs and ammo packs. You can actually gain a couple of thousand points just from that. Uh, Grand Bazaar around B flag, A flag, C flag. There is a lot of places where it can be very effective for the team in, in, in its full. Um, another problem that can occur when you're playing with random guys is that everybody tries and run in different directions. So once again, if you can, communicate. If you can't, try and follow them. Uh, one thing that I did from beginning before I was uh, in schools or anything was that I actually focused on playing Assault and Engineer. And when I played as an Assault, I tried running in the background of where everybody else were because you get 100 points for reviving, 110 points for reviving a fellow squad member, and you get 100 points from killing somebody. So basically, if you let three other guys run in front of you trying to kill the enemy, and they all three die, you can get 300 points from reviving them, or you can get 100 points trying to shoot the guy in front of you far away. I rather try and revive those three and get 300 points than at, uh, shooting at one guy getting 100 points. So, of course, you have to cover your guys as well, so you can't really just run around as a medic. Uh, but try and lay down some cover fire, revive those guys as soon as possible, and then engage the enemy. Because even if you die, from engaging that enemy you have 300 points for reviving the others and hopefully since they have a two second window of getting on uh, onto the game again they can help you out engaging this enemy so that's my personal uh, suggestion if you can um, Another thing that can be very very effective and good is to uh, try and um, find fellow uh, squirrels and invite them to your side or to your squad or to your game. Uh, one of the goals with the squirrel server and its, uh, and its purpose is to try and, and collect everybody there. Uh, very cool and very fun thing would be to have 12 versus 12 squirrels and then mixing it around and playing a lot of games against each other and 
not really focus on winning in that measurement because we're all squirrels and we all like to win and we all hate to lose but to to try and play as good and as long as possible and this was just some random thoughts for me and I'll hope to maybe hear or see from you again and over and out for this time. Hoo-ah!